What buckets of money are you saving up into that are you investing in during your career so that in retirement, you have a choice as to where to draw money from? Ideally, there's four of them. I'm gonna share that more coming up. My name is Mike Bernard. I'm the host of The Wise Money Show. I'm also one of the certified financial planners right here at Corhorn Financial Group. Make sure you hit that subscribe button, turn on notifications, and smash that thumbs up button. What's tax diversification? We all know what diversification is. Don't have all your eggs in one basket. Said differently, you've got choice. You've got, uh, you've got dollars spread in different places for different purposes. They're gonna behave differently, and, and therefore you've got, you've got choice. And from a tax standpoint though, what is tax diversification? Well, it's the same thing. You've got dollars spread out in different buckets or in different areas that are gonna behave a little bit differently to counterbalance each other. And you've got, you've got choice then. Early in my career, very early, probably my first year, um, I saw this concept of tax diversification uh, for the first time. And we, Kevin and I, Kevin Corhorn, founder of Corhorn Financial Group, uh, and I were working with a client that Back, at the, uh, back in the day, this is 20 plus years ago, they were coming to us and, and ready to retire. And they had reached the milestone. They'd saved up a million dollars in their 401k and IRA, okay? Pre-tax 401k and IRA. And in that analysis, they were looking at, well, we could draw four to 5% on this million dollars and that's enough for our spending. And, you know, and, and with social security, this, this plan all works. And we came to the realization that, it, and this is really a simple concept, and we weren't, we didn't like sh share this exactly, but in our analysis, it was, well, you really, your balances are a million dollars, but that million dollar is, million dollars isn't all yours. A chunk of that is actually Uncle Sam's. You, you have to, there's no choice about it. You have to give some of that, some of this balance is really an IOU to Uncle Sam because all of this money is pre-tax, all of it. And therefore, unless you're only gonna draw a little bit and your income is gonna be very low and you're gonna stay in the 0% in the tax bracket essentially because you'll have enough deductions, some of this money is Uncle Sam's. And anyway, we started navigating a way to, to kind of build the plan for, for these folks and, and they're successfully retired. They've had a great retirement. But this sort of emphasizes the point, well, they only had one account, one bucket to draw from. There was no choice. It was any time you needed to draw money, you were going to pay tax on it. Not a bad thing, but not choice. So any time just for your normal monthly income, yep, when you had a more expensive year because there was a trip or a home repair, buying a vehicle, it was taxable, right? You, when you drew more out, it was taxable that had additional consequences. This couple has since moved, of course, it's been 20 some years, so they've moved. When they needed the down payment for the house, we needed to structure, well, how do we draw some dollars out um, and, and navigate taxes to help with the down payment. And we've since started to do Roth conversions to try to get some of that, some of that tax diversification. So, so having more options, having more choice throughout retirement as to, okay, this is a, this, we're drawing more out than normal. We want to draw it out of after tax dollars or dollars that won't land on our tax return. Or no, we're, we're in the 12% tax bracket this year. Let's draw out more, uh, more pre-tax dollars. That's the tax diversification. That's the choice that you want. So what buckets should you intentionally be looking to build with your investments during your career so that in retirement you do have choice. Well, ideally there's four of them and not everyone's going to fit within this, I get it, but ideally there's four. The first two are pre-tax and Roth and I'm gonna say that together because it's hard for me to think through a situation that, that where someone right now, uh, when pretty much everyone has available to them pre-tax and Roth, where you should show up at retirement's doorstep with just one of those. You really should have both. Some years it should be, yep, we're doing pre-tax, and then other years it should be, no, let's start sprinkling in some Roth, depending on tax brackets, tax situation, income situation. And, and so hopefully you're showing up at retirement with at least a chunk of pre-tax dollars and a chunk of Roth dollars. If you haven't, if you've just been all pre-tax, 
or all Roth, which maybe I'm, I wouldn't argue with you depending on your situation and your, and your career, work with your certified financial planner to see, well, does it make sense for me to stay all pre-tax or how would we start shifting to Roth? Couple that I met with, uh, that we met with uh, a while ago, they were, uh, all of their retirement nest egg was, uh, was pre-tax and we developed a strategy to completely flip that by the first three years of retirement to have about 70% in Roth and doing so without pushing them into a higher tax bracket, we were able to get it done. So, so showing up with at least those first two buckets, a chunk of pre-tax, a chunk of Roth, that at least is the baseline foundation for tax diversification and retirement. Beyond that, that third bucket that intentionally you could build up is if you're saving enough so that you're maxing out your pre-tax or Roth or, or maybe both, then further beyond that, saving up into just an individual or brokerage non-IRA non retirement account as well. These dollars are not tax sheltered, so you've got to fill up your tax shelters first. That's why not everyone will get to this third bucket. But if you do, if you're able to, the reasons why this is a benefit is even though all the dividends and income uh, and capital gains from those dollars are not sheltered, those it, offer, it offers you an opportunity for you to draw dollars out or, or live off some of that principle and not push yourself into a higher tax bracket because your basis or principle, as you draw that out, as you, as you live on that, that, those dollars are not gonna be taxable to you. Yeah, you've got a plan for the capital gains and the, the interest and dividend. Hopefully, you can structure it so long the, the capital gains are long-term and the dividends, most of them are qualified, and those will be taxed at capital gains rates as opposed to ordinary income rates, which, it, which you'd be subject to when you're withdrawing from your pre-tax retirement account. So it gives you a little extra diversification because your basis is not taxable and long-term capital gains and qualified dividends taxed at a different rate. So again, this third bucket gives you a little bit more choice and flexibility. Those dollars also not subject to required minimum distribution, so that's helpful. Plus, if you're hoping to retire early, um, before age 59 and a half, these non-IRA dollars, these this this brokerage or joint individual joint account, those dollars you can draw from, you can live off of before age 59 and a half. All right, so then those three buckets: pre-tax, Roth, and then non-IRA, non-tax shelter, just a just an individual or joint account, brokerage account. What's the fourth bucket? The fourth bucket's cash. And again, not everyone will get here, but, and it doesn't make sense younger and earlier in, in your career, but we've seen a lot of success for folks that are intentional and have built up cash. They're, they're fully funding their tax shelters, and, and that's gotta be the primary strategy. Above and beyond that for long-term investing, funding a non-IRA account. But then above and beyond that, for, for building up a cash reserve or resources, just building up a cash account. Yes, fully funding your emergency fund, fully funding what we call delayed spending, so non-monthly expenses that could come up, fully funding that as well. But building up some extra cash, some excess cash, typically later in your working career can give another great, Gary, option as a bucket of money to draw from out there in retirement. Yes, the income on this is taxable to you. It, it will be, and uh, and and so so you, it's not tax it's not tax efficient. Okay, but it's just earning income, and that income can help you in in retirement. But as you draw out that principal, just like that that individual or joint account, it's not going to be taxable to you. And because there was no capital appreciation on those dollars, there's no capital gain that you need to worry about as you access that principal. Therefore. What is this extra, what is this fourth bucket of, of extra cash do for you in retirement? Yeah, it, it gives you access to a lot of principal with absolutely no tax consequence. And what that means is you could afford to do some Roth conversions early in retirement because you're living off of this cash. Second, it would allow you to delay Social Security if that makes sense in your situation. And, and there's a lot of factors you need to consider, but 
could allow you to delay Social Security and have that growing at 8%, help you maximize that for, for a couple or for your situation. So what investment buckets are you intentionally building during your working career so that in retirement, you've got choice? Having this choice will help you navigate the tax rules and your situation based on each individual year. What's your lifestyle? How much are you spending? How much do you need to be drawing out of your retirement nest egg? And it will honestly, guys, help you avoid and save a significant amount of taxes. It requires proactive tax planning and looking at all six areas of your financial life. So work with your CFP on that. If you don't have a CFP on your team, you can contact one on my team. Find us online, corhorn.com. That's Corhorn with Kay, wisemoneyshow.com. You can find us there as well, or give us a call, 574-247-5898. All right, there you have it. Go on and take your next wise step in your financial life.